Hey guys, Katie from the K Show Blog here, and I'm coming at you today with a little plastic free ish challenge recap for last year. So, in case you didn't know, last year I did a plastic free ish challenge. It was just something I set for myself because I wanted to try and reduce how much plastic I was using, how much waste I was creating. So, I wanted to replace one thing every month over the course of the year and just pick one wasteful plastic item, find an eco-friendly alternative, and then obviously I reviewed everything and talked about all the changes every month on the uh, video and then also on my blog. So the catch was I only had $50 a month for this. So I was trying to do it on a budget and I actually think it went really well. Like I was really happy with the efforts over the course of the year. Uh, it went under budget. So I think it's definitely possible to make these changes without having to spend a ton of money. And yeah, I was just really pleased with how it went. But some things, like when I made the video, I had only been using it for a month and then I made the video. So now, now that I've been making the changes for a longer time, I wanted to do a recap because some things, my use of them had changed or I figured out more tips to add or things like that. So just going to do a recap of last year and talk about some tips along the way. So I figure we'll go through like some of the general tips and recaps of the challenge and then pick each product and uh, quickly just go through any extra tips specific for them. But one of the big tips I had was, you might have noticed that the list I had in the original announcement, the list of things I was gonna change, was different to the list of things that I actually changed. And when I started, I just picked 12 things and was like, yep, I'll replace them, and, and figured that would be it. But then, as the challenge went on and I started being more like aware of my usage of things and aware of eco-friendly choices, I realized that some of those things I actually didn't need to change at all. And uh, Tupperware containers is a really good example of this because the ones I have here at the house, they work, they're fine, there's no reason to get rid of them at the moment. And getting rid of those to make another purchase, consume another product, even if it is an eco-friendly one, overall that's not an eco-friendly decision because it would be better to just uh, reduce the consumption and just use what I have now. And then once that's completely dead and I can't use them anymore, then I'll swap it to an eco-friendly alternative. And it's also something I had seen a little bit on uh, like Instagram and Twitter and all, all those places where people get rid of perfectly good things just to buy an eco-friendly thing and that's not more eco-friendly at all. Like consumption is part of the problem. So uh, that, that did change my list a little. And I call mine the plastic free-ish challenge because I have absolutely zero intention of never using plastic again. It's always going to be in our lives in some way. I just really wanted to get it to a more reasonable level. Like I felt like I was wasting too much that was just kind of like unnecessary and I wanted to get it uh, to just a, a more reasonable and manageable level and that's why I just focused on the things I used at home, the things I used the most and I figured that doing those things would have the biggest impact instead of things that I use like so rarely. Uh, so that's what I did for my list but that means that your list might be completely different if you sort of follow a, a similar approach. So I know a lot of people use reusable coffee cups when they get takeaway coffee and that's an awesome thing if you are able to use that. But I get takeaway coffee so rarely. I live in Italy. They're not really fans of takeaway coffee. You're meant to sit in a place and drink it here. Uh, but I just so rarely do that so I didn't have a reusable coffee cup on my list. But if you do drink a lot of takeaway coffee, like I probably would if I moved from here, um, then you should probably have a reusable coffee cup on your list, you know? So you just adjust the list for what would make the most impact in your life. Oh, I just got a visit from the dog. Uh, what are you doing? I'm just trying to be famous on the internet, huh? So another thing I think is really important to remember is just do your best, just keep going. I know that around this, like it's a, an emotionally charged topic uh, because it's about the environment, stuff like that. And from what I noticed on eco Instagrams and eco Twitters and things like that, there's a lot of shaming when people either get something wrong or make a different choice or things like that. So try and just ignore all that and just do your best. Like you're learning new habits, you're picking up new things, you're gonna forget some things sometimes, you're gonna make the wrong decisions sometimes. Don't worry about it, just keep moving forward. It's just always about moving forward and trying to make these improvements little by little and just try and ignore all that internet voice. Honestly, I had to unfollow so many eco-friendly pages that I followed on Instagram because they were just like too extremist and shaming people way too much. And it was really at the point when I saw one that was shaming mothers who fed with formula instead of breastfeeding because the formula was using so much plastic packaging. 
that I was like, I just cannot be around this because I don't believe in it in any way. Like such an extremist view and shaming people. And you know what? Like I haven't had kids. I don't even, I'm not even around kids in my daily life. Like I don't know anything about them. But I know that most mothers, most people I know who are mothers would have preferred to breastfeed their kids and the ones that haven't, they're not really doing it because they like love formula so much and want to destroy the planet with packaging like that's not their intention so like shaming them just seems like a, a nasty bully thing to do and I don't like that but I saw it in a lot of things not just that breastfeeding but like just other things where people had maybe they're given up a straw when they got a plastic cup or whatever like I don't know I just feel like let people try let people do their best and, and don't be a dickhead to people you know what I've noticed in doing all these changes is every single thing got easier the longer it went. I'm pretty sure I might have spoken too soon. I think it was everything, but at least like a good majority got easier the longer it went. It saved my budget so much money, which I love because honestly, I'm a little bit more money focused than environment focused, but my grocery budget now is so much cheaper. I'm achieving this goal of reducing my waste, but like I'm also saving a lot of money, which I, I love. And so, I like that my groceries, I don't have to buy these same things like paper towels and puppy pads and cleaning products and all this. I don't have to keep buying that in my grocery budget. Um, I'm actually just getting food most of the time. <laughs> and so that's been a great benefit. All right, so let's get into the swaps. The first one, I have them all down here. So the first one was puppy pads. It's the only clean one I have on me right now. Uh, so I swapped from using the disposable single-use puppy pads and swapped to reusable ones that you wash in the washing machine. This one was by far the best swap I made and something I wish I had done so much sooner. So if you do have dogs that use puppy pads, just go and get some of these now. I'll leave a link in the description and I'll... Uh, I don't know how much room I'll have, but if I have room, I'll leave a link to the original video as well. But go and get some of these because they save so much money and I don't know how much money you have uh, you are spending on puppy pads but like I was spending so much because my dogs were just I had two indoor dogs at the time and so we were just burning through these so fast it's had so much extra effects like my trash bin doesn't fill up as fast now because I'm not throwing anything away and and it's less inconvenient in the way that these last longer I don't have to change them like two or three times a day so that's been a great benefit as well more time to do my blog work the only thing about my use that's changed with these from when I first made that video to now is that in the first video I said I was trying out uh, filling a bucket with water and then putting these in the bucket to soak until I was ready to do a load of washing uh, for them but I don't do that anymore. I've noticed that they absorb the smell really, really well. So I can just put it in the bucket without all the water and then I'm usually washing them every couple of days. So um, just put it through the wash and my house isn't stinking up like a, a dog's toilet. So, so that's been the only thing that's different, I think, from what I said in the original video. But another thing I noticed is I still have to use the single use ones for traveling. I didn't anticipate this, but sometimes when I drop my dog off when I'm going on a holiday and then the time that I leave the house, it's like it's too close to be able to wash them and hang them out and have them dry before I leave the house. So, and I don't want to leave them there for however long I'm going for just sitting in a dirty bucket. So what I do is, oh, something in my eye, holy shit. A little ninja bug just flew and attacked my eye. I don't remember where I got up to, but what I do is, so the night before usually, or the day I travel, depending on how much time I have, I just put out a single use or disposable one, and then I have plenty of time to wash this, hang it out to dry, and then it's all clean and ready for next time. So I did worry that if I left it damp in the house, like the house would all be closed up while I'm gone and probably get moldy. So it's like, um, not a lot of airflow in these old houses, so everything gets moldy. So um, that's the only thing I've done different, and it seems to work well. It seems to be like the best solution for that issue. And also, when I I've gone on a couple of weekend trips with Coco, and I just use the disposable ones for that as well because I just don't have the resources or the interest in uh, finding a washing machine to go wash these, or like traveling with a, a pee stained. Uh, thing on the way back because they're usually road trips if she's coming so yeah I just use those for travel but when I made the change back in like last January I had like a uh, half a packet of puppy puppy uh, why can I not say puppy pads puppy pads I had like half a packet of puppy pads 
left uh, left over and I still haven't gone through that half a packet so you know even just with using it in those two situations I haven't gone through uh, half a packet which I think is about 25 so my reduce has drastically changed because I used to go through like a packet of those maybe a week a week and a half so that has been the best change it's probably the one I'll talk the longest on because it was just the best change and the one I really recommend paper towels so I swapped to these bamboo paper towels that you just wash in the washing machine nothing has changed since I swapped to these compared to like the video I made when I swapped I think everything is still the same the only thing I would say is different is it said and I said in the video that it lasts six months uh, I'm still using the same original packet that I got, so that's like 11 months or something now. So um, these are fantastic. Uh, it's fantastic to not have to buy paper towels with the groceries. It's great to just be able to like wash them up and use them again. I'm not throwing out a lot of excess. So these are awesome. These have been an awesome brand to get and an awesome swap to make. Number three, swapping to reusable bags. These were, this is my bag of bags I have here. So I just swapped to a few different types of reusable bags. This was one that's been really easy to stick to and a really easy change to make and I'm really happy with the ones I got. I don't think anything has changed that much, like using a bag is, is pretty simple. But So I got these ones that like fold up super tiny. I fold them up, put them in my tiny little purse. Like it goes like that and I just put it in my purse and always have it with me. So I use these ones for like, if I'm just leaving the house, even if I don't know I'm going to get something, I usually just roll one of those up and leave it in my purse. And the only thing I added to the collection, I wanted to test out these because sometimes I was using these bags. But if I was still like loading things onto the, the belt when I was doing my groceries and the people would be like, oh, what's this? You know, so I just got some of these because it's see-through. They can know really fast like that's my vegetables. Um, I don't really, they're both kind of the same to me. I like them both, uh, no preference, but just something for the vegetables. Some little one is good to have. And then I use these big ones for groceries. Like I pretty much only use these big ones for groceries and they have like the little spots in the side all around to put like jars in and stuff. So that's pretty handy. And they're big and sturdy so they carry all your groceries when you do it. There has been a couple of times I've forgotten them though, I will admit that. And there was also this one time when I was like holding it in my hand, but I got started talking to the cashier and sometimes I just get chatty. So I'm like talking to her about her life or whatever. And then she's putting it in the plastic and it didn't even register. Cause I was like all in on this conversation. And then I walked away like holding a reusable bag and then a plastic bag full of stuff. So a couple of times I've forgotten them, but overall like a really easy change to make. Okay, number four, this is my relapse one. This is like my what is that phrase, you know, like the thing you, oh God, I can't think of it now, but the one that's hardest to change, water bottles, these goddamn water bottles. Look, overall, like it's a huge improvement on my water bottle use before. So like I can be proud of that and take a little bit of like, yeah, go me for that, but it's still not where I want it to be at yet. And at home it's really easy. I always have like a reusable water bottle on me like when I leave the house. So like I don't need to buy water bottles in my everyday life or anything. But during travel, it's just so hard to make this swap stick, you know? There's been a couple of times where I just haven't had room to fit my water bottle. So my trip to Norway, um, I did only carry on packing and I had this like huge oversized dress and this packet of apples and a crown and all this stuff and it just took up any extra space I had so I couldn't fit my water bottle in. So there was that issue. That's kind of rare though. That's I had a specific like photo shoot of mine that I was doing and usually I, I have plenty of space to fit it. So that, that's kind of a rare thing. But the, the biggest issue I had was actually in my summer holiday trip. I went to uh, Spain and Portugal. We have family holidays twice a year, so this was our summer family holiday. And I realized that this just doesn't cut it for like a summer vacation because, you know, we're out in the heat all day, every day, that European summer heat. We're hiking, we're at the beach all the time, and this is just not enough water for me during the day. And it's like I said in that video, I drink three liters a day, like I need a lot of water. And there's not always, if you're doing those outdoor activities, there's not always room to like refill things. So I was using plastic water bottles for that trip. And the strategy I had was to get like 
I think two big 1.5 litre bottles and then just refill those once I had them. But just having this on its own, I took it with me every day, but I was like, yeah, I'm still thirsty, you know? And it's, I don't wanna get heat stroke in this heat and I'm out swimming and all that stuff. So that, I don't have an answer for that aside from just buying water bottles when you get there and then just reusing them as much as you can. But um, I think it's more important to keep yourself safe in like extreme, weather and uh, make sure you're not going down with heat stroke or anything so yeah i just don't have an answer for that one if you do have a suggestion on that please uh, leave it in a comment next one was a straw this one has been a great one i know you can see i have my shaker cup here that i use for water at home and it's got that same straw that i mentioned in that video that's just the ones i use for home and i'm just waiting for them to die so i can uh, replace them with glass ones but i got this final straw for traveling and I, I love these so much i'm so glad i got it it's so convenient i love that it just comes in this little case and then after i use it when i get back to the hotel or something i just can clean it and then hang it out to dry in the drying case so i i very much love this i love that i got it and it's just a metal straw but the perks is it it folds up so that's great the my usage hasn't really changed of from this one since I did that original video but I will say I did one time use it for like uh, maybe got a latte or something at Starbucks at an airport and I don't recommend doing that unless you can like really clean it straight away because then it got all gross and gunky with like milk in the sides so don't do that if you can avoid it um, or if you make sure you clean it straight away because I didn't I was like oh, it'll be fine when I get to the hotel it wasn't fine don't do that but the usage is pretty the same and I mean there's a lot of places with paper straws now and people are getting more conscious of that so um, it, it's an easy swap to make the only sticking point has been remembering to say hey no straw and like being confident enough to say that because sometimes it feels like it's gonna be rude to that person you know so that's the only sticking point I've had otherwise these are awesome like get yourself one of these they're expensive but I think it's worth it. I think I don't mind spending money as long as you get something good in return for it. And this, I feel like I got, I got something good in return for that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you carry around with you. Number six was Ziploc bags and I swapped to Stasha bags. These, I was a bit like, I was a bit like meh about them when I made the video. And the more I've used them, the more I love them. So I'm now thinking of getting another packet of four of these because I love them so much. They've been so useful, like one thing I've noticed is they're so airtight, the seal is so good that my vegetables like are so fresh if I put them in here. So I really love that. They can last us a little bit longer and stay fresh a little bit longer. So they've been great for that. Uh, my husband uses them for work sometimes because then he can just, you know, put his food in there and then rinse it out easily. Like he loves them. And I love that you can clean them in the dishwasher. So you can just put them in there, don't worry about it. So these have been a great, great swap. I definitely recommend them and I definitely love them more than the video when I made them. So that's been the only change. And I've also used them, sometimes I put my toiletries in them uh, when I've traveled because you know how you need a clear case. This is just the smallest one I grabbed for this video, but uh, yeah, you can put your toiletries in them and then when you go through security, it's really easy and nothing's gonna leak if something leaks inside, so. So a fantastic option to swap to and uh, just a great product overall. I'm a big fan of stash and bags now. Number seven was plastic cutlery, but I have left my bamboo ones in the car. But in this challenge, I swapped plastic cutlery to a bamboo set that I just got off Amazon It had like a knife fork spoon uh, originally i swapped to buying a pouch and taking from home because i was like the lowest consumption but i got stuck at airport security once when i was trying to take a knife on a plane so uh, then i swapped to the bamboo one it's a great product i love it but for me it's just like so rare that i use plastic cutlery that it's kind of uh i just don't use it that much uh, it's maybe a handful of times a year probably count on one hand how many times a year i use plastic cutlery to eat so it's just like uh, you see slow progress in the change and I think though once the warmer weather comes around again I'll be out doing hikes and day trips a little bit more and then probably taking a lunch and taking my bamboo set uh, because I noticed towards I think I swapped this in July and so I had a couple of those before it started getting too cold and uh, I just hibernate I don't like the cold <laughs> so yeah we'll see how that goes in summer next year and as it gets warmer but nothing wrong with the product I love it I just don't have much to update because 
I like burgers. I don't need knife and fork for burgers, you know? <laughs> okay, number eight was cleaning supplies. This is my other one that's a little bit tricky. I've had a little bit of a relapse. This and water bottles has been the, the hardest one to like find a solution that I'm 100% happy with. Not there yet with the cleaning supplies. So I had swapped to the Castile soap in the original challenge. And I do love the product. I love the eco-friendly nature of it. I love using it. It's great. But, um, I th and I think I'll keep it around for things like uh, washing the dog. Her, I washed Coco with this and her hair was so soft and fluffy and nice. So I'll keep it around for that. I haven't washed my hair with it yet because I'm still waiting for my shampoo to run out. But uh, I'm going to test it out for that. I like it for hand wash. I like it for using on the floors. But, um... Trying to use this for dishes and like cleaning the countertops in the kitchen, I really just don't like it for. It seems to like, it just feels like it's not getting clean and there's like an oily residue on some of my dishes. And if I've cooked something that has made like an oily spatter and then trying to clean it with this, it just doesn't clean. It just feels like the bench is coated with oil. So I don't like it for those reasons. And I've gone back to Dawn dish soap. Still working on finding a good a good balance with this. Uh, this one, it's been a great product. It's not fixing all my problems just yet. So if you have any suggestions for like eco-friendly or like something I could make even, something to clean dishes or an eco-friendly product, uh, yeah, just to clean dishes and like uh, wiping the countertops. I was thinking since my biggest issue with the vinegar water spray um, from back when I did the challenge was that at the time I had a very old sick dog who was like peeing everywhere and it felt like it wasn't getting clean for all her like gross messes so now that uh, she's no longer with us I could try the vinegar again and try that for the kitchen that's like gonna be the next thing I try but yeah if you have any suggestions for like dishes and kitchen area keeping that clean I'm all ears <laughs> number what are we up to number nine was toiletries I think most things I'm still using in the same way um, since making the video. I had this issue on my last trip. I don't know if you can see without it falling out, but this was my moisturizer bar. Just crumbled into a million pieces. So I'm gonna try and melt that down today and then make it one bar again, uh, just to get that last last bit out of it. Uh, I don't know if that affects the product, but um, my moisturizer bar has been going awesome. I really love it on my skin, especially for winter. That's been super nice. Um, I'm still making my my face wash bars from the Simply Earth recipe, and I love them. I love, love, love the toothpaste tabs. They're amazing. Like, I was a bit, you know, okay with them when I started, but not 100%. But now I love them for travel so much because before that, I'll go through one of those travel size toothpaste fairly often, like easily once a trip, and if it's longer than maybe a week, i go through like more than one. And now I have that uh, toothpaste tabs container that I got from Lush when I made this, so back in September, and I still have it, and I've used it for all my trips, like I love those, they're fantastic, I don't use them for home yet, but I do use them when I'm traveling, and they, yeah, they're a good investment, and I also love those toothbrushes that I tried, the bamboo ones, and then I went to, I love them so much, so I went to buy a new packet to uh, replace the others, and have some on standby when I need to replace them, but I accidentally bought the kids size, <laughs> so like just little ones, but they turned out to be so great. They're like a great little travel size toothbrush. So now I have my bamboo one at home for home use and then one kids size travel size uh, in my travel kit ready to go. So they've been great swaps. Skincare is just the one that's a little bit more difficult because I, I love skincare and I love like trying new oils and trying new washes and cleanses and all these things like I actually enjoy skincare and I enjoy trying new products so it's like I know I shouldn't because I'm trying to use less plastic but also like I like it it's something I enjoy so it's like I'm battling that in my head a lot at the moment and I think I'm just trying to use like a 80 20 rule you know use this for the most part and then just try little things uh, when I can. Number 10 was toilet paper. I still have a wall of toilet paper. I just, it used to be over there, but I hated it being in my office. So I've moved it just, it's in the bathroom now. But um, yeah, in case you remember that video, I accidentally ordered like hundred rolls of toilet paper and I just made a giant wall of it. Um, that toilet paper is still great. I don't love, it seems to like fall apart quick, easier than um, regular toilet paper, but it's not really a big issue. I like it. I'm interested to see how long that this lasts and I like the eco-friendly nature of it and how they're supporting uh, other people. So 
I'm just gonna keep going with the who gives a crap. Number 11 was beeswax wraps. And there's another one that I love more the more I use it. So, and it was like in that video for the Ziploc bags when I said the stash of bags isn't an answer to the usage on your own, like unless you're really rich, but combining the stash of bags with the beeswax wraps and then using jars and containers more around the house has been a very, like, put them all together and um, you've got a great solution. So these have been amazing. You can see they're like a lot more used now compared to when I made that video. But they're a great product. I don't wrap things all the time, but when I do, I I love using these. They keep everything fresh. They're easy to use. Obviously, it's great to not be like throwing out cling wrap or, or any other sort of wraps. So these are great. In terms of usage, nothing has really changed. I still just use them, wash them with the Castile soap. Still remember to stick it to itself, not to a bowl. And uh, you should be good with those ones. Number 12, the last one was the period cup, the one I saved for last. Uh, so my cup is in here. This was another one that the more I used it, the easier it got, the less I hated it. So we're a few months in now and I'm, I'm very okay with it now. And I even used it the last month. I was confident enough to use it without any backup and it had no leaks. So like it uh, took a while to figure it out, but I, I got there and uh, I'm happy with using this now. I even used it on my recent trip to Poland and I took my little, uh, sanitizing cup with me and I remember when I made that video I was like oh how would you get access to boiling water I totally forgot that rooms have you know like a kettle in them or most hotel rooms anyway so I was able at the end of the period I was able to just boil some water in the kettle pour the water in here and then I boiled it so it was like clean and ready to go so uh, this has proven to be very handy and very I'm very glad that I got that because that's great for travel yeah and overall it's it's just that's the best thing I can say is just that it got easier the longer it went so just like keep trying keep experimenting now I'm like I'm on team cup like I'm a fan now <laughs> so that's a recap um, I did do a frequently asked questions on Instagram I asked for any questions about plastic free ish changes or, or anything like that to add in the video and almost all the questions I got were things that I've answered along the way in this video so I don't have any extra questions to answer of course if you do have another question just pop it in the comments I'd be happy to help if I can or maybe somebody else will be able to jump in and help um, but the biggest tip I have for making these plastic free ish changes and, and trying to reduce your waste is just to figure out the problem like figure out the hurdle that's getting in your way and overcome that don't just copy what I've done here in this video or what anyone else is doing on the internet. Um, figure out like what gets in the way of you making the changes, you know what I mean? Because that's what I found to be most useful for making the changes and the plastic bags is the perfect example of that. Like my specific issue was that I had reusable bags, I wasn't using them because they were so big and bulky and I had them hidden away in the laundry because like I didn't want them in the house, they looked unsightly. and. Um, so I never use them even though I had them. So just buying something reusable, it doesn't solve the problem. Figure out what's getting in the way. So it was once I swapped to these bags that I solved that problem that they're not big and bulky. I can fold it up and have it with me at all times. And I have them hung up in my kitchen so that they're right near the front door so I grab it on the way out. Like it's that reminder that I can't forget it. So I fixed the problems that was getting in the way of me making that change and now the change has been easy. So yeah, like I said, just don't just copy what anyone says, even if it's me, just figure out your hurdle, find what's getting in the way, and then overcome that hurdle, because that's how you make the change, you know? So that's it for the Plastic Free-ish Challenge now. I don't really have much more Plastic Free-ish content to make because my challenge is over. Obviously, I'll be updating Instagram stories if I find other things, or maybe Facebook, but um, I, this is a challenge I was doing for myself, and I thought I'd bring you guys along every month to sort of show what I was changing to and add any tips. So. I hope if you were trying to reduce your waste or make any changes in your life for eco-friendliness, I hope it's been able to help in some way, been useful. Now we just say sayonara to the Plastic Free-ish Challenge and I will see you guys next time.